Welcome back, my friends, to the show that doesn't end. Glad you could attend. And today, yes, we're looking at an independent horror film brought to us by Adversary Films. And it's called The Cemetery. Now, The Cemetery tells us the story of this crew of this reality TV show called Ghost Seekers, where they go out and they look for evidence of spirits coming and walking the earth. You know, people from beyond the grave who are actually still here in spirit form. And, uh, you know, they don't really quite believe in it, but they do the TV show anyway. Well, they get this story from this ancient religious uh, text uh, about a cemetery in Pennsylvania that was set up to mark uh, the area where there were some horrible acts performed on natives by the church in order to exorcise the demons. Yes, that's right. They, uh, the priests say that there was a, a just a uh, outbreak of possession amongst the natives, and no matter what horrible, torturous things they did to these people, they could not get the demons out. And so the ghost seekers go out to this cemetery to find out if the demons still walk the earth or if maybe there is something else behind the story. Wow, let me tell you about uh, the cemetery now. Now this is brought to us by the same guys who brought us Crossbear. Love Crossbear, great uh, you know, touch of that slasher feel. Same thing, only this time we're going paranormal with uh, the demonic possession. And these guys, man, these guys are brutal. The opening scenes are actually taking place in the past. We get a little glimpse into this story that of what happened in the events uh, during the 1671, which surprised me. It was a period shots, and you don't normally get that in indie films, only because of the costuming and things, the way you have to set it up adds to the budget. But they threw it in there, and it really helps sell this story of the these atrocities that were performed by these priests back in the day. Now you've got this uh, in modern day here with the ghost seekers who are at the cemetery. You've got a collection of individuals who definitely are each unique people. Though they are characters we have seen before, they aren't too cookie cutter or cliche to where they're stale. I mean, you've got the stoner guy, you know, the guy who's in the guy to the sleazy guy. He's got the you know sleazy. Uh, yeah, he just in, he's the that guy, you know, and you've got him in the crew. you got the geeky guy. You've got his girlfriend, which you're trying to figure out exactly what brought these two together because she's, she's rather opposite of him in many ways. You've got the kind of leader of the band who's this horny guy kind of looking to score with this new crew member they brought on board, this medium played by Sandra, who does well, uh, who, whose name is Sandra, excuse me, was played by Tabitha Ray, and she does an excellent job of playing kind of that outsider person who doesn't quite feel comfortable here one, because of the advances of uh, the, the leader guy and also the fact that she's new to the crew and she's actually kind of taking this seriously while the rest of them are not. Uh, there's, so you got some great dynamics there among the characters, which you need for a film like this. You need some conflict, you need some things to happen. You just want that. It adds for a little meat to the script. And so there's a lot of meat to the script. Now, uh, some of the things with the legend that they portrayed, they do flash back a number of times and show the really gory effects. Let me tell you, it's brutal effects. Uh, and, you know, it seemed a little repetitious, but... I was uh, refreshed when they started because the first couple times they flashed back to the legend, it, it started off with dialogue. I'm like, oh, we're, we're gonna re, we're gonna retread what we just were told at the beginning of the movie. But they didn't. You learn a little bit more as the film goes along, which was nice. It was, it, it, it had me worried, but uh, they didn't do it. It didn't feel that repetitious because the material they kept adding to the story, so they didn't repeat themselves too much which uh, helped, you know, because I was kind of worried we're just going to get the same story again with each flashback, but we didn't. So good props there. Uh, you know, the gore effects, oh man, practical gore effects all over the place. Gore horrors, you will love this film. Uh, I love the fact that there was no noticeable CGI uh, effects in this film at all. Thank you guys for using practical gore effects. Love practical gore effects. Keep it going. And I hope that in their future projects they use it as well. Uh, I didn't really have too many problems with this film at all. Uh, they do a great little poke fun at those ghost reality shows as well. When you see a little clip of them trying to actually film for the show. Love the little jab at that genre. And... Uh, you know, like I said, just in general, it's a well-rounded 
good demonic possession story. From Schlollywood, I've seen a number of other demonic movies over the past year and a half possession. This one beats them all. It beats, uh, you know, uh, the, the Devil Inside, The Last Exorcism 2. It definitely is above that. And the production value looks just as good, if not better, than those films. So for a low-budget film, it really doesn't look like a low-budget film or feel like it in most parts, okay? It's definitely worth your time. Go to their site, check out. You can get a copy there uh, or catch it at a festival. It is making the rounds. But I, I suggest if you like your demonic possession film, a good one, The Cemetery should be on your list. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, keep that ticket.